Come on. Let's go. Bang. Come on. Bink is so excited for today's video. He's a huge, huge fan of Nintendo 64. Isn't that right? <laughs> this is Bink. He is my girlfriend and I's cat. She adopted him a couple years ago. And as you can see, he is the chillest cat ever. Um, yeah, he's my buddy. And I thought it was about time to introduce him to the channel. So... Hello, everybody. All right, off you go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guys and ghouls, welcome back to the Video Game Basement, and happy Saturday, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. Whatever you're doing, going on a hike, doing laundry, doing arts and crafts, it's all good, and it's all what Saturdays are about, so so happy you could join me for part of your weekend. I think today's video is going to be a really fun one. If you guys saw in my earlier video, N64 was my first ever console, and so there's a ton of nostalgia tied to that, but I was also six and seven years old playing a lot of these games, so I've never really stacked them up side by side and seen how they, how they pan out. I also love tier lists. I, for some reason, end up watching a lot of these online. I find them just captivating, and I think there's something naturally engaging about watching someone else rank stuff. I'm not sure why, but whether it's pizza reviews or top 10 movie scenes, whatever it is, I just always find them interesting, and so hopefully you guys do too. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Okay guys, so really quickly before we jump into the tier list, you can probably tell I look a lot different. I'm wearing different clothes, the lighting is different. That's because it's now Sunday. Uh, so without getting into too many of the boring details, filming for this video took a little bit longer than anticipated and so I wasn't able to get the video out yesterday like I had planned, but I really appreciate your guys' patience. And if you follow me on social media, uh, on my Instagram, if you don't, Feel free to check it out um, at Video Game Basement. I did make a story about that just because, you know, I don't really care if it's five followers or 500 followers. I think if I tell you guys I'm going to have a video out on a certain day, I always want to try to meet that. And so I did want to give an explanation uh, as to why it didn't come out on Saturday as initially planned. Now, with the boring stuff over, let's get to our tier list. So, as you guys can see, on the lovely screen here we have this collection of N64 games and the format for today these are all of the N64 games that I owned as a kid and played so I'm gonna be going through these specific games and I'm gonna be giving them a ranking from S to C for those of you who haven't watched a tier list video before you might be a little bit confused by the S um, S tier is basically just a term that was established on the internet to mean you know better than a so you have a which is typically your best but s tier is like god tier like it's just it's unbeatable and so to give something an s tier it's really got to hit that that five star mark i think there's probably going to be maybe a couple of those on today's list but it's it can't be just doled out you know willy-nilly you have to really mean it when it's an s tier a tiers are logically an excellent game and just that tiny step down from the S tier. So they're not exactly, you know, the Mount Rushmore or the elite few of the games, but they're still excellent games, very minimal flaws, if any, and also stand the test of time, games that you're ha more than happy to go back to time and time again. 
B tier is, again, kind of following on the trend here, still a really solid game. So B tier games are going to be lots of fun. If you have a game, if I put a game in a B tier, it's not that it's not a fun game. It's just maybe at B tier we're starting to see a little bit more of these flaws that aren't really noticeable in the A tier and a couple things that kind of hold it back from being that top, top level. But still, really fun games and definitely have replayability. And that leaves us with C tier. Um, C tier, obviously, you know, you're going to have some more noticeable flaws here and a few things that kind of are either pet peeves about the games, limitations, just things that don't make them fun in a certain way. Um, but still have good qualities, so it's not like they're they're F. You guys will notice there's only four tiers here, and in a lot of tier list videos there are more. Um, but because I sort of have a baseline enjoyment for all these games, I don't really think any of them are going to be worse than a C. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't you know D or F tier N64 games out there. I just don't think any of these necessarily fit in that category. So. Enough rambling, let's get to the tier list. All right, guys, so starting off, we're going to go bottom to top here. So starting off at the bottom, we have Mario Kart 64. This game, I mean, what can you say about Mario Kart that hasn't been said? Just an iconic, iconic game. Um, really just introduced, I think, the world to sort of a party-style arcade racing game. The maps are timeless. The power-ups are incredibly balanced. You know, you get that catch-up feature, right, where if you're behind, maybe you're going to get a lightning bolt. Maybe you're going to get a blue shell. And if you're at the front of the pack, you can pretty much count on getting either a single banana, a green shell, or, you know, maybe a boo. So Mario Kart 64 is just a an awesome game, I think. It's my favorite Mario Kart, even against the new ones. I know I might get some flack for that, but it's the first one I played. It's the one I know best, and it's the only one where I know how to do the jump that cuts down two-thirds of the Rainbow Roadmap, which, you know, maybe if I get enough uh, requests, we'll make a video on that later. But needless to say, guys, it, to make a long story short, Mario Kart, we're going to put it in the S tier guys. I know that's a bold move as I just said. They're few and far between, but I don't think there's any argument Mario Kart is an S tier game. Okay, moving on. Mario Party 3. Another very very solid game here. Um Mario Party is such a cool format. It does something that no other game had really done with this open board game style play play interface um i played three as my first one obviously there was a one and two uh and i think three as far as i understand is kind of widely understood as the one that added a lot more mini games had a lot more uh features in the games that were not seen in previous versions so mario party 3 i think most people would agree is is a kind of a good representation of that early era mario party games um i do love the new versions the ones that are on switch i'd say probably those are a better playthrough if you haven't played mario party and you want to kind of experience it for the first time but mario party 3 at the time was such a good game and I think it still holds up. I don't know that it has that legendary status. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments here. This always happens. This is this is my list. Um, so I'm sorry if you're going to lose sleep over this. Uh, I know there's a lot of Mario Party lovers out there. But for me, Mario Party is going into the A tier. Still an incredible game, but just not that upper echelon. All right, you guys, that brings us to Mario Golf. I started off strong here with the triple the triple header of Mario games. Mario Golf is a fantastic game. I love golf, as I had mentioned earlier. And even if you don't love golf, I think it's very easy to love Mario Golf. The simple three-point click mechanic for the swing is such a good way to level the playing field. Um, basically all you have to do is master that timing and you can shoot a really good score in Mario Golf. I also thought for such an early game, 
it had so much data in the game you know whether it's the wind speed or giving you the precise elevation of the putt or of the approach shot um even things like rain you know the rain has an effect on the speed of putts i actually have a friend uh shout out wes who i've been playing mario golf with recently on steam and we laugh because it's such a precise game and it doesn't give you that specifics on the rain like when the rain happens it's just kind of like hit it harder at least that's our understanding if i'm wrong please drop a comment below because i would love to know how that rain mechanic works and how to actually account for it and factor it in but regardless mario golf just an awesome game tons of playable characters lots of maps a couple different game modes too the like ring mode and stuff but Mario Golf kicks ass, and I think, for me, it's a really, really hard game to knock, but again, I don't think it gets into that legendary status, so Mario Golf, guys, is going to go into A tier as well. Okay, so what do we have now? Another heavy hitter, James Bond 007 Goldeneye. GoldenEye is just, it's synonymous with N64. Like, I don't think you can talk with anyone about playing Nintendo 64 or having one as a kid and have GoldenEye not come up. Like, this is, this is truly the most nostalgic game for a lot of people. And for good reason. I mean, who is cooler than James Bond? Who, you know, makes a better video game character than this internationally acclaimed badass spy who's got all of these gadgets and weapons at his disposal um in terms of gameplay mechanics it was a pretty nuanced game at the time things like zoom you know different levels of zoom with the sniper rifle lots of cool gadgets on your watch and some pretty uh detailed mission design which really gave you the feeling of having that sort of spy spy approach like james bond would i think it's a really carefully created game the multiplayer was another great component um looking back on it now it's pretty simplistic just a lot of sort of grid style maps but ripping goldeneye with your buddies you know and playing you know with odd job and jaws and all the kind of legendary bond characters was just such a fun time um there's no question for me in this one guys GoldenEye is going into S tier. It has to. It has to. I'm sorry. Okay, Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis is an awesome game if you love Mario sports games. Even if you're not a huge tennis fan, this is a really easy game to just pick up and start enjoying. Um, I played a lot of this with my brother who... <laughs> beat me every single time i know that's i've said that in every single video but like this is the game that stands out in my mind in, in my mind as the one that i just could not win at um i really love some of the little details in mario tennis so for example the different movement speeds of each character and their different traits so you know if you're someone who likes to play more of a power character maybe you grab bowser he's got a crazy fast serve it's really hard to return but He's also super slow because he's a giant turtle. Um, then you come in with Boo, and maybe he's got a weaker serve, but he's flying all over the map. He's doing circles. He's agile. So I really like that component of it. It was a great game to progress through in the story mode. You know, as you go through the different cups, the flower cup, the mushroom cup, the star cup, you're unlocking stuff. You're unlocking new courts, new players, and there's even a couple secret courts that you have to look up uh, different ways to unlock, basically different challenges that you, you know, have to work through in the game that aren't advertised. But I love Mario Tennis. I think a lot of people love this game, and so I think it's a, a comfy A-tier game. Okay, we're switching it up. We're switching the order. I decided I wanted the order to now go top to bottom because I feel like I'm just kind of peeking ahead at my list here and I want to keep things fresh. So we're going to actually pivot now and go up to Space Invaders. Space Invaders is a pretty iconic arcade game. I think it, most people have either seen it, you know, referenced in movies or TV or played it themselves. 
I don't know that it was really a household name in terms of being like an N64 specific game, but it's a solid game. I mean, the premise is pretty straightforward. You know, waves of enemies, I guess, space invaders, aliens coming, you know, descending down the screen, different movement patterns, things like that. And it, it's pretty simple, but I think it's still fun to play. Um, I don't know that it really has like the depth to push it to like one of the upper tiers, but I still have a lot of nostalgia for this game and the boss fights are cool. It's, it's surprisingly challenging as well, trying to figure out kind of how to beat each boss. They have a set of kind of unique moves that you need to figure out in order to beat them. So I really like Space Invaders, but I think we're going to keep it in B tier. Okay, Pokemon Puzzle League. A lot of you guys maybe haven't heard of this game, but it's uh, it's a fun game. It is basically like if you took Tetris and added Pokemon theme to it. So the general idea is that it's like a head-to-head -head match between the, tr the Pokemon trainers. And the really only important part about picking your Pokemon is that determines what sort of like effect you get when you have like a special effect combo um i don't think that this game is something that i really like seek out like i actually have a retro version of it on my switch because of uh i bought an n64 retro pack and it's a good game to just play if you're like mindlessly you know you want to just have something that's not that not that complicated just a simple just playing tetris basically but honestly for what it's worth i feel like if you wanted that, then regular Tetris would probably just be better. So Pokemon Puzzle League is going to be our first C tier. It's just average. There's nothing wrong with it, really, but it's just also not that remarkable. Okay, speaking of games that you guys probably haven't heard of, Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. So I need everyone to like put on their imagination cap for a second. And you're a six-year-old boy where you already love playing with Hot Wheels. You have Hot Wheels, you have a collection of them, you have Hot Wheel tracks, then all of a sudden there's a Hot Wheels video game where you can race your Hot Wheels and control the car around the track. That's probably the coolest premise I've ever heard in that situation, and that's how the game felt playing it. Uh, going back to play it now as an adult, the mechanics aren't super refined. I mean... The mechanics aren't super refined on an actual Hot Wheel. They fly off the track half the time, and it's a lot of chaos. But that doesn't mean it isn't fun, right? For a game to be good, it doesn't necessarily need to be polished and always refined. It just has to be fun and enjoyable. So Hot Wheels, I really like playing it. I went back and played it to make this video. I think there's some cool Easter eggs, like hidden spots where you unlock different cars, the whole like do tricks to earn turbo is a cool concept and the general pace of the game is easy enough to enjoy it's fast paced the races are quick so it's not like it's a you know a really stressful game to play <laughs> so i really like hot wheels i think i'm gonna put it in b tier it's a solid game um, I'd go back and play it again, but it's not one of my favorites. Okay, so like as I'm recording this, I'm realize, realizing I think I've said I really like about every one of these games as I'm summarizing, so I promise you guys I'm not going to do that with World Cup 98. Not because I don't like it, I just sound repetitive. World Cup 98, the first soccer game I ever played, it was obviously named after the actual World Cup that was in France. Um, there's nothing too remarkable about this game. If you've played soccer games before, whether it's a modern day FIFA or one that was more in this era, it's pretty much got all your standard features. Um, the commentary was pretty solid and there were a couple cool things like customizing which park you played at. I don't really know how common that was at the time because I didn't have any other soccer games, but as a kid, it was a fun game to play and I think it's still enjoyable enough but really i mean there's not much else to say about it i like that the intro song is i get knocked down i actually don't know the real name of that song so don't kill me but like that's a banger um otherwise though this is this is just like a very kind of average average game so it's also going to go in c tier all right jet force gemini now 
we're getting back into some quality stuff here. Jet Force Gemini was an awesome game. First of all, can we take to take a second to appreciate that name? Jet Force Gemini? I mean, that's a dope sounding game. Even if you have no idea what it's about. What it is about is you're playing as this space captain and his sidekick and other sidekick who's a dog... Uh, and you're trying to basically save these endangered worlds or these endangered species from this hostile, basically evil villain that's taking over these planets. Um, the enemies in this, at least in the early stages, I didn't get deep enough into the gameplay to remember, but I'm pretty sure they are all, all the same throughout the game, are these ant, basically ant-like creatures, and they're the drones, and... You have to progress your way through the different planets and eventually, you know, free, liberate these worlds from the alien overlords. Uh, the game plays really advanced for a game of its time. Like some of the mechanics, whether it's rolling around, going into prone, uh, the strafe, the built in strafe feature is a really cool idea. And it just kind of gave it that feeling of being not just an average shooter game. It was something that was really innovative for its time. I also think the storyline was a compelling one. You know, as a little kid, I felt for these little bear-like creatures that you encounter on the first planet, and I wanted to save them. That was, that was you know, your mission. And it was sad whenever you couldn't get to one in time because you basically have to save these and not all of them make it. With that being said... A, a, a lot of things to consider in this one, but I think anyone who had played this game would agree it's at least earning of this level. We're going to make Jet Force Gemini an A tier. I don't know if it's quite the legendary status, but if it's not, it's close. Maybe we'll, we'll call it A plus informally. Ugh, water break. Okay. Mission Impossible. Wow. What to say? I mean... What can you expect from a video game made from a movie franchise? Honestly, if you look at all of the ones that have been put out in history, it's really hard to say. Sometimes they absolutely kill it. Sometimes it's like you wish it had never been made and it's so bad you don't even want to ever watch those movies again. In the case of Mission Impossible, the N64 game, it's definitely the former. This was a really, really good game. Playing as Ethan Hunt going through the different missions it had a feeling of being original so it wasn't necessarily ripping off the movies but it felt true to the movies at the same time you know the characters that are referenced that you're playing as some of them are are real characters whether it's ethan or candace or phelps and the missions have all of the elements of a classic Mission Impossible movie. So for that reason, it's it's a really, really solid game. The gameplay was cool. You had some cool tools at your disposal, like uh, the face, the like the outfit. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, disguise, like the disguise creator. <laughs> there we go. But it was a tricky game too, and I think that's a cool thing. You know, when you're a kid, you're trying to figure out what do I have to do next? It's not a game that's going to hold your hand through every mission. You have to do some thinking about, okay, what are the clues at my disposal here? And what am I supposed to do to accomplish the next objective? So Mission Impossible, in summary, really, really solid game. And it's going to get a B tier. It's a very good game. And I think it's worth a play if you haven't tried it yet. Oh boy. Star Wars Episode One Racer. I, I always call this game Star Wars Pod Racing, but this game is cool. This is another example of cashing in on a movie franchise. Again, a really well-executed one. Essentially, this takes place in Episode 1, the events and the settings of Episode 1. You are starting off as Anakin and basically working your way up the racing circuit, taking on different, you know, sort of villain villainish characters like Sabalba and you have to eventually become, you know, the champion of of the racing world. 
The mechanics were really cool in this game. Stuff like, you know, tilting your pod racer on a 90 degree angle to make it through a chasm. Some of the maps are just absolutely epic. Like huge drop offs and cliffs, big jumps, all kinds of movement that you're not really expecting. So it's a very, very good game. Like I would play this game today and I do. So Star Wars Episode One Racer is going to be our next installment in the A tier. Very, very good. Okay, Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap. Wow. What to say. I think, where should we start with this one? I mean, someone was sitting down in a boardroom and thought, how can we make a game about photography interesting to kids? Like a video game. That is a tall task. When you think about the concept of something that would be difficult to get a kid excited about taking pictures of things and not interacting with them really in any other meaningful way is a pretty challenging idea and i think pokemon snap absolutely crushed it this game is fucking awesome um so many cool parts of this game whether it's figuring out the different little tricks you have to do to unlock the next course or finding out the ways to get every last point out of a course. You know, when you first go through the beach course, your first your first map, there are very standard Pokemon that are in plain view. But slowly you start to realize that you can manipulate the map with different unlockables and different tricks, whether it's the apples or the smoke bombs or whatever, to reveal more Pokemon that were hidden in plain sight. And that is such a cool idea. I love when games have hidden features that you have to kind of work to figure out. And this is way before the time of, you know, everyone having a smartphone in their pocket. It's not like I could just look up how to do this. So, yeah, guys, Pokemon Snap, it's going in the A tier. It's a fantastic game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is about as revolutionary as it gets, guys. This game catapulted Tony Hawk to the mainstream, people that never would have been fans of skateboarding. I guess maybe that was the first Pro Skater, but Pro Skater 2, I think, just had a lot of refinements, and it's an awesome game. I mean, yes, it doesn't have the open world style that the older, like, later Tony Hawks had. Um, those were in introduced more in... In I think Pro Skater 3 or Underground 1, but it's still a really cool game to go back and play. Awesome nostalgia, and I thought it was really great that they included so many actual pro skaters. So if you were a skateboarding fan, you'd be able to see your favorite skater in the game and play as them, play with their unique skating style, and lots of different customizations, board customization, mo uh, modifying your skills, all that cool stuff. I think this game is about as solid as it gets. I don't know that it has that sort of special, extra special charm to be in the S tier, but it's definitely an A tier game. Okay, 1080 snowboarding. So I don't know how popular this one will be. Like I played it a lot and I have heard it referenced other places, but I don't know if it was like a classic staple in a lot of people's households. But it's definitely a game that, again, was really revolutionary for its time. So, really, really solid snowboarding mechanics. It had a ton of different game modes. You could do a race. You could do a half pipe session. You could do a trick, uh, you know, basically a trick contest against other boarders. And I liked the customization here again, you know, picking your own border. I thought it was really cool that there were different nationalities as well assigned to the borders because then there was sort of a sense of pride. Like, as a Canadian, I was always using Ricky Winterboard <laughs> because he was the one Canadian border in the game, you know? So then you're racing against an American or a Japanese border. Uh, in terms of the actual physics and the mechanics of the game, it was pretty realistic. Like, there were a ton of tricks that were based on actual grabs and the motions that you had to do to do the more complicated tricks, like the 1080 the game is named after, are increasingly difficult. So it took a while to master those things. Um, 1080 is an awesome game. Again, it's not going to be in that upper, upper tier of S, 
but it's definitely an A tier game. Okay, Banjo Tooie. So the successor to Banjo Kazooie, it had some improvements on the mechanics in terms of like the things you could do with Banjo and Kazooie, but overall it wasn't as memorable of a game for me. Now, if this is your favorite game or you're like a diehard, you know, Banjo Tooie fan, I apologize, but when I think back about these games and I think about kind of what I remember, a lot of the memories come from the Banjo Kazooie side. Um, Banjo Tooie for me, it's good, but I don't know that it did anything that special, so I'm going to put it in B tier. Now, Banjo Kazooie, on the other hand, is a whole different ball game. This game is epic. It's such a cool concept. You've got Banjo, your main character, the bear who's trying to rescue his little sister that's been kidnapped by Gruntilda the Ugly Witch. Now, Gruntilda, or Grunty as she's known in the game, is like the most cliche looking witch of all time. Pointy hat, pointy chin, green skin, and she's evil. She stole Banjo's sister because she wants to kid uh, use her beauty for her own. Um, and so Banjo and Kazooie set off and have to you know, advance through different levels, collecting jigsaw puzzle pieces to finally get access to Gruntilda's lair and, and take her down in the end. This game was so much fun. Uh, they obviously had later versions beyond Banjo-Tooie with Xbox 360. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was an awesome game where you could build your own vehicles, but Banjo-Kazooie is the game that started it all. Um, the different worlds were so cool. You know, I remember going to the the very first world, which is that anthill, and then going to the beach level, and then the underground level. And uh, there's just so many iconic memories associated with this game. The gameplay is really balanced. It feels lightweight, but also, like, there's tons of stuff to figure out and new moves to learn. So Banjo-Kazooie is our third S tier game, hands down. Okay guys, I'm looking at the list. We got three left and looking at the list so far, I'm pretty happy. I think we're pretty spot on. If I was gonna make one change, maybe, maybe Mario Party should have been an S tier, but we have to stick by our choices and I'm, I'm happy with it in A. So let's march on here, final three, another Absolute banger coming our way. Donkey Kong 64. This game, this game was such a complete game. Like, not only is there a huge variety of worlds you have to explore and sort of get to the individual bosses in each, but you're also playing as every member of the Kong family. It's not just Donkey Kong. You're playing as Diddy Kong. You're playing as Lanky. You're playing as Tiny. You're playing as... Uh, I can't remember the girl's name, but <laughs> anyway, it was so ambitious that, you know, they were trying to tackle all of these things and it, it really came out in a very polished way. Like the game is, it feels well thought out. And so for me guys, Donkey Kong 64 is going to be another S tier. It's going to be our fourth S tier. That is... I think about as good of a Donkey Kong game as there is in early gen consoles. Uh, so I know people love Diddy Kong Racing as well. Uh, I didn't own that, so it's not on the list, but I'm very confident with, with Donkey Kong 64 on S tier. Super Smash Bros. I mean, what, what more can be said? It is the most iconic two-dimensional, like, side view fighting game ever it's still played competitively like this version is still played competitively today i think everyone has experienced at least a one round of super smash in their life whether playing with friends playing with roommates you know solving arguments over a game of smash it's just iconic it's such a great idea to have these different characters from the different early franchises you know the mario characters samus from metroid uh Got something in my eye. Samus from Metroid, you know, Star Fox. It's such a cool mashup. And just duking it out with all these different characters in iconic backgrounds and settings on the different maps. It felt so cool to have that 
sort of nod to all these other franchises wrapped up under a single game. Uh, there's no debate with this one. You guys know where it's going. Super Smash has to be S tier. So uh, that that's just it. There's no argument. And the last one is Pokemon Stadium. This was a really cool game. And I like that if you played Pokemon games growing up on a Game Boy, in the traditional sense of this kind of top-down worldview, you got to experience it in a totally new way. It was a three-dimensional Pokemon battle, and that in itself is just such a cool reimagining of the franchise. Also, there were a bunch of really fun other modes in this game. It wasn't just the battle. You know, you had the boss, uh, whatever, the boss castle, right? And you had the kids club. So the kids club was this amazing collection of mini games where basically you could just be content playing those for hours. It had nothing to do with Pokemon battles, but different unique mini games based on, you know, the different Pokemon and their traits. So I loved this game as a kid. I played a lot of it with my cousins and I have so many fond memories of it. And I played it recently, you know, in pre prep of this video and getting some of the footage. And it, and it holds up. I mean, if you're a Pokemon fan, this game ticks all the boxes. So Pokemon Stadium is going to sit comfortably in the A tier, guys. So there it is. That is our complete tier list from top to bottom. We've got five S tier games in here. I think each one of those absolutely stands up to the test of time. Some really, really great contenders in the A tier. A bunch of fun, maybe lesser known ones in the B tier. And then, you know, some C tier ones that aren't horrible. And, uh, you know, if you're looking to try something new you probably haven't heard of or played before, you could, you could check them out. But once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. Please, if you, if you do enjoy it, Feel free to, to hit a like on this. Obviously, I don't want to be that guy that's, you know, asking for likes and subscriptions, but any kind of engagement helps uh, helps me figure out what, what kind of content you guys want to see. So if you like this, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. If you want to see more tier lists or you want me to get back to more of just the gameplay, I'm happy for any and all feedback. Um, I appreciate you guys, each and every one of you. The support so far has been awesome, and I'm having so much fun making these videos. So as long as you guys want to keep seeing them, I'm going to keep pumping them out. But thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and stay tuned for the next video.